better than this. What a blow! <laughs> As the 2010 PBA Fiesta Conference rolls on, we put the spotlight now on two teams that are reeling from their recent losses. Tonight here at the Conepa Astrodome, the BMEG Derby Ace Llamados and the Santa Lucia Realtors have an opportunity to put that behind them. Hopefully get a win streak going ahead of some big assignments this Sunday. Basketball addicts of the Philippines, hello and welcome to the PBA on Solar TV. Along with the Dean Kinito Henson, I'm Vito Lezadi. Let's head straight to the lesson for today, Kinito. Let's head straight to your Dean's list. What do these two teams have to do to pull off a win today? Well, let's talk about Derby Ace. You know that they're coming off that heartbreaking loss to Alaska in overtime. And for Derby Ace, I think it's important that they get back to basics. Why? Because in the last three games, two of which Dimeg lost, they gave up an average of 101 points a game. They win with defense, but you don't win by giving up so many points. They're giving up an average of only 83 points the whole conference. They need to cover the passing rate. No unnecessary risks, and they need to challenge the interior. Time to check the pointers now on the other end. What about the Santa Lucia Realtors? Well, for the Realtors, they need to work in chemistry. Vito, you know that since they made that big roster change, they brought in six new players. They have not lost, or they have not won a single game. They've lost three in a row, but they can't do it by AJ alone. Anthony Johnson needs car power and support. And also, the front line has to reemerge. Marlon Gina is going to be starting. He did not play last time out. But what about Gabby Espinas and Nick Velasco scoring only two points apiece? in their last game and of course they can't rush no rush no harm that should be the policy this is not a fast breaking team they need to slow things down well you mentioned Marlo Aquino starting for the Santa Lucia Realtors main reason for that uh, Ali Peak will not be able to play today and we'll get the more details on that from uh, Patricia Heason a little later on as we are now just moments away from our tip-off for the second game for this PBA Wednesday, there you have uh, Coach Ryan Gregorio of the BMEC Derby Ace Llamados looking to bounce back, as you mentioned, from that two-point overtime loss against Alaska. But if there was one good thing to come out of that, it was definitely the coming out of Cliff Brown. What a in great individual performance for the Llamados import. Well, absolutely. Conference high 34 points for Cliff Brown. Had 16 points in the third quarter. But of course, BMEC still lost that game by two in overtime. And look at this, Cliff Brown trying to continue that performance from uh, last time around against Alaska. Failed on that layup, they'll get a second chance at it short. Floater from Pingris is no good and looks like it's B. McDerby ace last touch. Cliff Brown playing his eighth game now with the B. McDerby ace Yamados after averaging about 20 points per game, blowing up for 34. Avito, what about this backcourt of Santa Lucia, Escobal and Custodio? Oh, yes. And they played each over 30 minutes in that last game of Santa Lucia, losing to San Miguel. Escobal with 14 points in that one, and Custodio with 10. And Marlu Aquino is going to be called for that foul. Now I have to tell you, Kenito, I mean, still, every time I look at Santa Lucia nowadays, probably the last three games. I'm still trying to get used to all of the new faces wearing uh, Realtors uniform. Well, that's the reason why we're saying that it's a team that is a work in progress. They're looking at chemistry. They need to be able to get a lot of gelling. And AJ has been a constant for them. And that's a big, big plus for the Realtors because their import has delivered game after oh, yes. game. It's really the local support that really not has to get together to give him the kind of firepower that he needs. So there's not as much pressure on his shoulders. Anthony Johnson, arguably the best import of the conference, but now Cliff Brown of the BMEC Derby Ace Armados looking to put the first points on the board, and he will miss after his first free throw. Let's take a look at those numbers from that last game for Cliff Brown. Oh, unbelievable numbers. Take a look at what he did in terms of points. 10 out of 22 from the field. 
also had his fair share of rebounds and assists but missing two free throws but look at this a small man exactly. picking up the offensive rebound <laughs> off the second missed free throw well coach Boyd Fernandez can't be happy about that and Cliff Brown so aggressive yes well you see Cliff Brown being very active in the paint and you can expect him to really be at home there he's not an outside threat not at all uh, he's really only taken one attempt from beyond the arc so that's obviously not a part of his arsenal or maybe a part of his arsenal that we haven't seen quite yet that we probably will never see <laughs> <laughs> but you notice so far in this game, B-Meg has had, what, three or four possessions? Sure. In every possession, Cliff Brown has touched the ball. And he's moved inside to challenge the interior defense of Marlo Aquino. Cliff Brown, who came in to the Yamada squad, replacing Lorenzo Wade, who played their first five games of the conference. Now the Yamados coming up with this early lead. Still a lot of time left in the first quarter. Ten minutes and 42 remaining. They go to Anthony Johnson. Clearing the way for Johnson. Johnson nowhere to go. Now Escobar. Four seconds on the shot clock. Escobar in the paint. He loses the leather. Well, what made that turnover possible was a defense of Mark Pingris on the import. And look at this layup here by Paul Artadi. And it actually looked like that ball slipped off his fingers as he went for that layup. So I think he got a lucky break there. So it's an early four-point lead. You know, I have a feeling that when Paul Artadi sleeps at night, he's dreaming of Tony Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson for three. That rattles out. Rebound chase down. And uh, Paul Artadi trying to pick uh, Gabby Espinas' pocket. He will be called for the foul. Uh, Lito, I just want to explain myself earlier when I said that Mark Pingris defense on Anthony Johnson sure. created that turnover in the previous play. I think it's because of the way he plays Johnson, physical and face-to-face. -face. Johnson forced to pass rather than shoot, and then the ball stays with him so long that it disrupts the rhythm of Santo Lucia's offense. Marlu from the high post, and it's another takeaway for the Llamados. Artadi crisscrossing through the D, throws it up, he gets the basket. Well, Kit Lightning, getting it done. What? Santa Lucia, we mentioned in our Dean's List, Vito, mm -hmm. that this is a team that doesn't like to rush. They are last in fast break points. Yes, they are. I think Beebeck is conscious of that. You know, if you're playing against a team that doesn't like to run, what, what do you do? You run. You go against their uh, rhythm. Bonbon bon Custodio jumper is no good. And now, the Lemados with a chance to pile on the points. Down low to Brown. Brown strokes it for two. That's off, but there's Pingris with the offensive board. Put back is good. And the Santa Lucia Realtors have been caught flat-footed at the opening of our first quarter with no points against the Lemados' eight. We'll be right back. Connect to Astrodome, Patricia Bermudez, he's on here with some good news and some bad news for the Santa Lucia Realtors. Good news is that based on their last performance, Coach Boyan says that he can see that this team is now playing as a unit defensively and that the new players have well adjusted. Bad news though, Anthony Johnson is still playing with a sprained left ankle and so is Josh Obisondo who has missed the last week of practice because also of a sprained left ankle. Now, he is going to try to play and will be on meds this entire time. Now, as you've mentioned, Ali Peak is also at home nursing a high fever. Now, he was supposed to play a crucial role against a tall Derby Ace team, but now they'll have to rely on Marlo Aquino and the rest of them. Vito? Thank you, Patricia, for that report. And, you know, with Orbis Tondo out, that's opened opportunities for guys like Pong Escobal and Bonbon bon Custodio. And uh, Escobal came up with 14 points in the last one, Custodio with 10. Anthony Johnson in the paint. Heavy traffic, but he's used to it. Well, Patricia's report about Orbis Tondo clarifies the situation. Bistondo only had six minutes of play last time out for Santa Lucia. And since he hasn't really been practicing, take a look at this foul on Anthony Johnson driving strong to the hole. You know that Escobal and Custodio yep. really have to soak up their minutes here. And Johnson can't finish a three-point play. Still a six-point lead for the BMEG Derby Ace Llamado. There you see Josh Obistondo watching from the sidelines. Remains to be seen if he'll be needed today. Now Arcadi. All day for that long one. I think he will be needed. I mean, someone's got to stop Atadi. Right now, 
This point guard already has seven That's points. That's right. <laughs>